I wanted to be a pilot in the in the aeronautica militare, um, but at that time, they they wouldn't accept women. I applied nonetheless. I was rejected, and uh, you know it was at that point that uh, I thought, well, you don't you don't let me fly them. Well, I'm gonna build them, right? <laughs> and so that's how I got to aeronautical engineering. Yeah. Is indeed a, a question I also had to ask myself at some point when I realized that things were pretty much working and, and, and that I was having fun and people around me were happy and then you start reflecting wait a minute what is it right that I do and uh, how do I do it and is it uh, guaranteed that it will always work <laughs> I, I believe a good ingredient of the recipe if, uh, if, if you allow me to call it so it's definitely being in being in it and whatever it is that you do with your heart no matter what you do you really have to find a passion for what it is that you're doing right and every time i changed i was always um, realizing that what's important to me integrity above all um, service before self fulfilling the idea or the ambition of a greater good rather than just your own career aspirations, right? Um, and a certain taste for excellence were always, you know, the right place for me to start from. Of mm. course, with the underlying idea that in that combination of skills, of resources, of characters, of background, inclusion, diversity, inclusion and belonging are some key, key factors without which no recipe really works. I would say generalizing, I think the developments around autonomy, plus of course the, um, the data type of, of access, right? In, in my early uh, years in, in the industry, you know, you, you'd hear uh, engineers saying, well, an airplane is 10,000 mechanical parts flying in closed formation, right? So yeah, today, in addition to that degree of complexity, you also have up to, I believe the A350 has 250,000 sensors, right? Um, so capturing data. So you go from a typical nuts and bolts business to one of the most data rich and data dependent industries in, in the world. Right? But on longer term, there's all this, uh, the potential of, uh, of high performance computing in perfect handshake with quantum computing, which I think, I think will be the next, uh, the next uh, revolution together with autonomy, definitely and uh, of course alternative uh, propulsion means pursuing uh, zero emission the failures which is worth talking about is not necessarily oh i made a mis mistake in my calculation or i thought a technology would be ready but there's you know still some research to do it's it's really the human component and how to learn to be resilient without um, losing your humanity. It's that balance, right? So uh, between getting your skin thicker right? and, and, and in these circumstances, it's important to, to learn to, to let it go to observe it, but don't let it sink. But at the same time, you need to keep your humanity because that's what connects you to people. That's what makes people want to work with you and achieve great stuff alone. In our industry specifically, you'll never get anywhere. You need a team around you, right? So that is the, I've, I've experienced failures, crises, from the human perspective, because I misjudge situations. I misjudge the importance of creating alliances, of uh, nurturing networks in a positive way. I don't necessarily see
see that as a gap to fill. So on one side, we will never turn Airbus into a startup. Um, certainly, I think there's a lot we could do in the sense of risk taking, calculated risk taking, risk appetite. It's not always there where it could be, in my humble opinion. But Airbus will never be a startup. And startups, especially in their nascent phases, um, are not industrial uh, uh, realities like, like Airbus is. So there's different, uh, different ways to bridge these two worlds, right? So that you profit from, from speed, from, from creativity, from uh, less strings attached without losing what makes Airbus Airbus, right? So the brand, the, the, the safety uh, culture, which is very, very strong in the company, right? Um, I mean, the, the, the figures um, in terms of consequences of, of COVID uh, crisis on, on women employment are just uh, embarrassing, embarrassing and totally and unacceptable. It, it, it's just, I, I would have never thought and until I saw that McKinsey um, report, which came out in July 2021. I knew it was bad, but it, it, not so dramatically bad. I, I would not have a message for the women legitimately wanting to come back, but I have a message for who is in still, for every single person having a lever in his or her hand to really commit, really commit and stop seeing this as a risk, okay? We take a risk and we recruit a woman on this position. I have had experiences in my Airbus journey of part-time mothers in leadership roles who have been performing and working as a team of three. Okay, so stop calling it a risk. It is an investment which will have a return, um, which you wouldn't have never have dreamt of. So the message is not for the women. The message is for those who should be doing something to make sure that fair opportunities are given to all. My dad, my mom, um, Leonardo da Vinci, for me, <laughs> the quintessence of, uh, of engineering. There is so much beauty and art in, in science and, and in engineering. And last, but by all means not least, Mr. Tom Enders, <laughs> who has uh, definitely been for me the greatest uh, the greatest boss I ever had the pleasure to serve. I would definitely go into space. Space, the final frontier. So it's uh, there it, it, it's exciting times for for aviation, but nothing compared to what's going on in aerospace. Um, especially when you consider the barriers of access to space, which are radically lowering, going down, the idea also of uh, of European sovereignty to be to be protected, because it's not just a matter of technology; it's a matter of values, and and um, there are superpowers out there muscling up to um, take ownership of, uh, of, uh, of, of space. And we have um, a work to do as, uh, as Europeans, I'm strongly convinced of that. And space is big, yes. Space is pretty much empty today. Um, yet, um, you know, since the advent of space age, more than 35, thousand man-made objects have been cataloged in orbit around the earth.
the debris situation, especially in low Earth、um, orbit, may be reaching catastrophic tipping point. This is called、uh, the Kessler effect. It was a scientist、uh, from NASA who predicted this,、um, where you know collisions between objects could create a cascade of collisions. And activities in low Earth orbit could be rendered impossible for several generations. So, if you ask me, what would you do? What type of startup would you want to create or support? Definitely, debris. Not only proactive avoidance, but collection.、Mm. Thanks for having me. It was great to have a chat with you both. Take care. <laughs>